it's time for Coffee with the Chicken Ladies, a podcast for people who love chickens. Hey, everybody, and welcome. It's Chrissy and Holly from Coffee with the Chicken Ladies. We're here, and this is episode number 108 of our podcast, where we talk about everything chicken, family, fun, and more chickens. More chickens. We drink a ton of coffee. I'm talking a ton. But most importantly, we hug chickens every day and we kiss them too. Don't forget, we brew coffee from a little coffee house here in Bel Air, Maryland. Holly Ann, what kind of coffee are we brewing today? This is Sugar Plum Fairy because it's Christmas week. It's really good. It has some nice spices and it. it smells good. Yay! Okay, so are you ready to sip some of this delicious holiday blend coffee and chat? I am, but first, a word from our sponsor. We have some exciting news to share from our sponsor, Grubbly Farms. This month, you can receive 30% off if you're a first-time buyer. I'm a long-time subscriber, and my flock love the healthy, nutritious treats. Orders $40 and more ship free. If you haven't heard, Grubbly's has a fantastic layer pellet and crumble feed. It's packed with plant and insect protein. It's perfect for those picky chickens and ducks. This offer does not apply to subscriptions and cannot be combined with any other discounts. It's a great time to try Grubbly Farms if you haven't yet. Use the code CWTCL30 for 30% off your first purchase. Try it today. Okay, so how are you doing? Are you feeling the hustle and bustle? I did most of my shopping online, so it's not too bad. I'm doing a lot of baking right now. Yeah. And that's fine. I love to bake. And I have eggs of my own to bake with. (laughs) That's always good. Yeah. No walk of shame for you. Apple Blossom, my Delaware, is laying like a champ. She started laying and she hasn't stopped. I cannot say enough good stuff about these Delawares. And then a few days ago, Cupcake the Barnabelter started the squat. Wow. And I think we're seeing some Barnabelter eggs. Truffle is nowhere near laying. <laughs> She's too busy looking fabulous every day. She's They're like, so pretty. me lay eggs? No, just take my picture. That's They're it. so pretty. The Barna- I love everything about the Barnabelters. They are beautiful. Man, it is busy. We are just now back together recording, doing stuff because we've all been sick. Thank God we're starting to feel a little bit better. You mean our weeks and weeks of illness? Oh my That's God. Good times. And then everybody's going to get together later this no. week and then we're going to restart it all over again. Oh, don't but say that. But yeah, so I did most of my shopping online, some out, and now it's just the sprint to the end. It's like, okay, wrap all the gifts. Do all the the meals. Do everything, you know? Because I do not have children, this is not that bad. I have five children to buy for. My niece and nephews and your two girls and that's it. I know. And it's like the wrapping and everything else is like craziness. But it's the most wonderful (laughs) time of the year. Just keep saying that to yourself. I'm all about those gift bags. I like gift bags. And you can go to different stores now and find chicken Christmas gift bags. Absolutely. Oh, on the Christmas subject, because this is the first time we're recording since it happened, I just want to give a gigantic shout out to Phoenix. Oh, yes. Phoenix is so thoughtful. She is a longtime listener. She heard me whining about my inability to get my Christmas goats from Ikea, and she bought some and sent them to me. So incredibly sweet. Phoenix, you are amazing. We Thank you. We have the you. best listeners We out really there. do. We, we really do. do. I mean, this is that time of the year that you appreciate everybody and our listeners. You are amazing. We love you. We love you. Okay, so if you're listening to our show and you're loving it, head over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a written review. It does the most amazing things for the growth of our show. We can't say it enough. When we get one, we're like little kids calling each other. We got another review. We love it. And while you're there, hit that subscribe button because that way you never, ever miss an episode and it helps us grow in other ways also. You can share your favorite episodes on social media. You can tell a chicken-loving friend about the podcast. If you're looking for other ways to support the show, you can visit our Etsy shop, mugs and t-shirts. You can become a patron of the show. Visit patreon.com slash coffee with the chicken ladies. Check out our levels of membership. And the other thing you can do to help support the show is visit our show notes, use our discount codes and affiliate links, and buy products from our sponsors. Yay! Hey, Chris. Yeah. Do you like subscription boxes? Does it have anything to do with chickens? Of course. Then yeah. Let me take a minute to tell you about the Chicken Love Box. If you love goodies for your chickens and you, you need to go to chickenlove.com. I love the Mega Box. Tons of useful products for my flock and a chicken tea for me. You can't go wrong with a chicken tea. They are so cute and so soft. 
In the November box, I absolutely love that glass rooster cutting board and the woven chicken tea towel. I adore those Santa chicken hats and scarves, and I cannot wait to hang those chicken ornaments up on my chicken tree. Boxes start at $39 a month. They ship immediately after your order, and shipping is always free. Such a great deal. Don't wait. Get off the nest and click already. Use the code CWTCL50 for 50% off your first box of a three-month subscription or more. That's chickenlove.com. That's chickenluv.com. Get your subscription today. Have you heard of Strong Animals Chicken Essentials? They make natural supplements for your flock. Strong Animals has used plant-based products and natural approaches to promote the health and vitality of backyard flocks. Their products contain organic essential oils, prebiotics, and other natural ingredients to support the immune system and digestive health. Give your chicks and chickens what they need to thrive with Strong Animals Health Products. Visit GetStrongAnimals.com today. The Breed Spotlight is brought to you by Murray McMurray Hatchery, defining quality for generations. For over a century, Murray McMurray Hatchery has remained a trusted family-owned business, working tirelessly to ensure our poultry meet the highest standards. Whether you are an experienced enthusiast or just embarking on the journey, Look to McMurray Hatchery for guaranteed quality rare and heritage breeds, low minimums, and all the supplies you need to raise your flock. Request a free catalog today. Come, they told me to the breed spotlight. Dum, 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 dum. Welcome to the breed spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. You're feeling the spirit. <laughs> you got it. It's Christmas week. It's Christmas. Actually, our whole episode this week is very Italian-themed. It's just like me. It is. (laughs) Where are the French and Irish? (laughs) We do them all the time. (laughs) We're sticking with our Italian theme. We're doing a bird we have not ever profiled before. The Bianca de Saluzzo is a dual-purpose Italian breed of chicken. It was developed in Saluzzo, which is in the Piedmont region, northwestern Italy, like at the foot of the Alps and the Po River Valley. Some beautiful area. Really gorgeous. I looked this up and found some fantastic photographs. From the edge of this town, you can see Monviso, which is an alpine peak. Right. It's very close to the French border. So this breed probably would bleed over into France. Right. Now, regional attractions around Saluzzo include hiking and mountain climbing and medieval architecture. It's a very old town. Let's go. The Cathedral of Saluzzo, and actually there are several other very old churches and tombs are open for tours. Let's get on the plane. And it gets better. This is also a foodie destination. I don't see why we're not there. They have wine. They I don't have know. Chestnuts. They I have, keep saying we need to take a tour before we do our Christmas episodes. They have dishes like chicken cacciatore they're known for. Right. Might be something that personally we want to do, but that is something they're known for. Well, like I said, it's a foodie destination. So you're going to find wine, chestnuts, other local dishes. Now, we just want to make a quick note because this is a dual-purpose chicken. We're going to mention a couple of things. We have to. Yeah. I mean, that's how the bird is used. The Saluzzo and actually a couple of the other local Italian breeds are very slow-growing. And so the tradition is that the people who farm them, they like to honor the breed and they sell their chicken meat seasonally. So it's usually only available in late fall and early winter and would have been used for Christmas feasting with things like the chicken cacciatore. Right. By the time we get to the end of the spotlight, you're going to hear some really good things about the farmers who are working to save this chicken. So in the spirit of full information, right. you know, we're talking about exactly what they do. Now, the breed's name translates to... White of Saluzzo. Bianca being white. Well, yeah, Bianca is definitely white. And the chicken is white. It's a white chicken. <laughs> it's also a light-bodied chicken. You're going to look this chicken up, and the first thing you're going to think of is this chicken looks like a A leghorn, but they do have some noticeable differences, but that's the first thing you're going to think of. It's the first thing I thought of. Well, right. I mean, because they're all white with yellow legs, you can tell at a glance they're not, and the leghorns have bigger combs, they have bigger white earlobes, and I don't know, I feel like the leghorn has this certain Mediterranean quality to them. I mean, they all have the stand-up tail. I don't know if they are quite Mediterranean, because they're from up in the mountains. Right. But the Saluzzo have smaller white earlobes. They don't have as much red face. Yeah. And their combs are not quite as big. Yeah. I think they're probably a little bigger. So, like we said, they look shorter to me. I think they are shorter. I think their legs are shorter. Their legs look shorter. And that's really hard to get because some leghorns are pretty little. 
Yeah. You know, but this breed looks shorter and stockier to me. Right. So the Salutos, like we said, they're slow growing and they generally reach mature weights of five and a half pounds for roos and four and a half for hens. Give or take. They're around the same. Yeah, Yeah, they're comparable. So their silhouette is a little different. There might be some crossover relation there, but I still think the leghorn is more distinct looking. Yeah. Whenever you see a white chicken, big red comb, you think a leghorn because that's where your brain goes. Right. But there are many different breeds that are out there that are representative Mm -hmm. and that are different. And this chicken is from a different region, the northwestern region of Italy. Now, Italy is known for regional differences. So, And you're in the Alps at this point. Yeah. So you're way north to, you know, way south to near the border of Sicily. In the Mediterranean Sea, right? Yeah. And everything is kind of different. Geographically, it's different. Yeah. The, The traditions are different. So this chicken is from the northwest. It's a little bit more north. Mm -hmm. It's a chicken that needs some help. Yeah. Now the Saluzzo was, or I should say is, very much a bird of the common people. Yeah. Most families in the area raised them as dual purpose, and they sold much of their excess product. And that's partly what puts them in a little bit of a deficit. I think so. Like most heritage breeds, they have suffered and declined with the introduction of hybrid layers and broilers. That industry has moved pretty much all over the world. Right. Now, I did find this. I thought it was interesting. In 2018, a group was created in the locale to promote and protect the Saluzzo and a couple of other breeds that are also from the same area. And the group is called the White Hen of Saluzzo Presidium. Okay. They call for free ranging and allowing all of the birds to live normal chicken lives. No cages, no artificial lights. Right. Eggs are considered seasonal. And so they're mostly offered in spring and summer. That's actually across the board for most chickens. Right. The group speak out very strongly against caging at any time, and they call for the abolition of all poultry caging, all battery cages. Right. We can get on board with that, absolutely. The Presidium's objectives include low-impact, sustainable, and regenerative agriculture. The chickens are fed a non-GMO grain mix, and dewormers, antibiotics, and any other medications are used only on an as-needed basis. Well, that's the thing. If they plan on selling meat of this bird, that's a difference. Right. Like you can't feed a bird that you're going to eat all these different medications. Well, you can use them as needed. Like if right. a bird is sick, you can use them. Right. But they can't use them prophylactically. Exactly. What we'd like to get to is a point where this bird is simply just a backyard chicken, an egg layer, and allowed to live out their life. I couldn't find any statistics saying if they were popular as pets or anything like that. Yeah. It was hard to find information on them anyway. And the Presidium, as a bigger group, have some presence in publications where I could find them. Mm -hmm. It was harder. They're obviously the experts on them because they're working to preserve and promote them. Right. They need some help. So the chickens do have coops to go into at night, but they literally free range all day. So they're at risk for predator attack. And so if you're wondering how they protect the chickens, if they're always free ranging, they use trained livestock guardian dogs. We've wanted to talk about this on the show, which we might Mm -hmm. in the new year, is guardian animals to help chickens. Right. And they do a very good job of what they're supposed to do. Yes. The problem is like being able to catch the predator before it gets to the chickens that quickly. But they usually do a good job. Prevention is always the key. Always. So a 2021 study or or census of Italian heritage breeds included the Saluzzo are an endangered breed. So protecting them really is crucial. Yeah. So let's look at this. Hens generally begin to lay at about six to seven months, which is your average Average, heritage breed when they're going to start to lay. And they produce about 180 plus eggs per year. That's because they're dual purpose. Right. So they're not 100% on the egg layer side. Right. 180, you can live off that. You absolutely can. I mean, I would imagine they're used to taking time off in the winter because it's colder when they are. They lay white eggs. They do lay a white egg. Yeah. And the chicks are just like your leghorn chicks, your little yellow Q chicks. There's a thing in me. This is personal. I love yellow chicks. Yeah. Like, to me, they're the cutest chicks ever. I would be hard-pressed to find a cuter chick than a Simon Favreau's chick. You know who's close? Who? The The Delaware. Delaware. Little chunky head. I've never seen a chick (laughs) with a square head, okay, ever in my life. But a yellow chick with a big marshmallow head, you don't get much cuter than that. When, when our Delawares arrived in the McMurray box, I popped the box open. And the first thing I saw was those big, it's a marshmallow head. fluffy yellow heads on the Delawares. They look so like cute. a marshmallow. Yeah, kind of do. If anybody out there has seen the movie Hop, and I'm sure you have, the chicken tries to take over and become the Easter Bunny. Okay. But they show him and he looks just like the chick. Well, he must be a Delaware. But yellow chicks are the cutest. So anyway, they're yellow chicks. And the breed is very hardy. 
Do they pick on each other? If they're confined in small areas, they tend to pick on each other. That's another reason why, you know, free ranging them with the livestock guardian is really good. Right. That also goes back to the regenerative agriculture. The birds are foraging, they're turning over vegetation, they're fertilizing the grasses that they're on. So there really isn't a lot of information. I mean, we know they would be an amazing homestead breed. We know that they are good at their jobs. They're hardy. (laughs) Exactly. They're definitely hardy. But I found zero information about how good they are as a pet, what, you know, their personality, anything like that. So if you're out there and you have this little Italian bird, which you might be in Italy. Yeah, probably if you have this, you're going to be one of our European listeners. Yeah, because send us a picture. Tell us what kind of pet they are for you. Yeah. So that we have some sort of standard that we can go by. We found no U.S. breeders. <laughs> None. So... We're all going to Italy. That's just solved. Absolutely. Because I want to go through and hike and see these birds out free ranging, doing their thing. Can I take wine as we go hike and free range? Oh, we'll ride a bike. With wine? Yes. <laughs> I'll just drink it out of the bottle while we pedal and ride. With a basket. With flowers and the You're bottle wine. you crash my bike. <laughs> <laughs> And then we'll sit with this little chicken and have a great time. It's going to be wonderful. I really like the fact, I mean, again, you know, we don't do meat chickens and everyone knows that. We respect that path. But I really had a lot of respect for the fact that these farmers were trying to find a way to keep this breed viable and take excellent care of them. Right. Everything from non-GMO grains to the livestock guardians to protect them. Well, it's the newer generations that said, hey, we've used this bird up until this point. Mm. Let's put some care into this bird. Right. And our numbers are getting lower. What can we do? Mm -hmm. We have to do that out there or we're going to lose these breeds. Right. You talk to a person that doesn't know chickens and they're like, a chicken's a chicken. You talk to a chicken person, they're like, chickens are amazing. Well, that and there's so many different kinds of chickens that people don't even know about. And this is a little Italian breed that nobody knows about. In fact, you can't get it here. Right. You have to go to Italy. So we have to do our part and they're doing it, which is good. Exactly. It's awesome. So again, if you're in Italy and you have this chicken, send us a picture. We will love to see it. Oh, we would. Yeah. If you're looking for a chicken coop that's produced in a planet-friendly, sustainable way, try Nestera. Each coop is made from highly durable, 100% recycled plastic that keeps the equivalent of up to 2,000 shampoo bottles out of a landfill. Their clean, modern design will fit into any garden or run area and comes with an industry-beating 25-year warranty and a range of handy accessories. Simple to put together, so quick and easy to clean, and most importantly, red mite resistant. Your chickens will love it. Quick shipping from Amazon.com or Nestera.us. Use our code CWTCLP10 for 10% off. Check them out today. Roosties proudly sponsors Coffee with the Chicken Ladies. If you're raising chicks or keeping chickens, take a look at Roosties store on Amazon.com. We've personally tested their products and we're huge fans. They have their famous nesting pads, those fantastic chick water and feeder kits, do-it-yourself port feeder kits, water or nipple, and water or cup kits. And you don't even need to drive to the stores. They're all available for prime delivery on Amazon.com. Visit Amazon.com and check out the Roosties range or follow the link in our show notes. Okay, so we ready to move on to main topic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so main topic this week, we're just going to go over some of the benefits of keeping backyard chickens. Yeah, we're keeping it light this week. It's Christmas week. And we're baking and... Yeah, if we have some listeners out there that are on the fence and you you come over to us, you're like, I don't know if I can do this. We know that we have a lot of listeners who are considering getting chickens. And they're kind of on the fence and Mm -hmm. are like, what is in it for me? Right. We're going to tell you this week what's in it for you. And you know what? The list is long. It is. And, you know, we're giving it from our point of view. And hopefully we'll have some food for thought. Yeah, because we all were in that point in our lives before we had chickens where we got on our laptops and right. started pulling up research. Or no. p- Holly Ann pulled out the books. I was going to say, yeah, that, that was books. I was <laughs> back in the dark ages. And said, I think chickens would be an excellent addition to my homestead, my home, my mini farm, my urban house. Back wherever. in the day, we used to call it hobby farm. I don't think people use that term as much anymore. No. And then said, well, what is this going to do for me? And you know what? Not even knowing. Then you get the chickens and it exceeds expectations. Yes. So what are some of the things? Well, just a note first. We understand that having a flock in balance is a very good place to be. Like your flock dynamics are good, your coop is full. And if you're at that point and have no desire to rock the boat, we hear you. Yeah. So just relax and listen. 
Yeah, this is more for like if you have a friend who's like, you mm-hmm. tell me why I should get chickens. Yep. And keeping chickens connects you to a long, long, long line of women and some men who have gone before you. Chickens cross all cultural, geographic, and socioeconomic class lines. In other words, anyone can keep chickens. In the whole world and everyone in the world that wants to can and they do. Yeah, I mean, we still have that sticky legislation stuff where people in some areas are forbidden, which is awful. You're right. That's awful. But you're the same as if you want to keep chickens here and you can, someone in another country, it brings everybody together. Well, what's the first benefit of keeping chickens? What is? Food security. So food, eggs mostly. I always tease everybody. I'm like, if the apocalypse happens. Uh Uh-huh. My chickens are sleeping with me in my bed. (laughs) It is food security. And when you have a decent amount of chickens laying in spring and summer, you are awash in eggs. But do not go into this thinking you're going to save money on eggs. You are not going to save money on eggs. But what you're not going to save in eggs, you're going to gain in a very wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. So food security, they lay an egg. If you choose the right breed, you could get an egg a day through the spring and the summer and partial fall. And they will feed your family. The average hen will give you several hundred eggs, some of them more than a thousand eggs over their lifetime, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. Yeah. And eggs are one of the number one sources of protein. Bioavailable protein, yeah. And again, there are some people who keep dual purpose chickens. That's not our path. We respect that. And if you're looking for that kind of information, I would send you straight to Murray McMurray Hatchery. Yeah. So next thing... A sustainable regenerative food source, which is right. building on the first. Yes. And right there, you're talking about dabbling in permaculture. Right. Where you're setting up systems so that you're using all the chicken litter. You know, you're using all the things that the chicken provides you, the eggshells, all of that, and putting it back into the land. You're using the floor of your run. You're digging it out and using it in your gardens. You're composting everything and putting it back in the earth. That is helping the world. Absolutely. We're so used to everyone pulling everything out and tearing everything out and stripping the land. This way, you're putting things back into the ground. Okay. So let's go to the next one. That's companionship and mental health benefits. This is probably unquantifiable. It's so gigantic. The thing that people don't understand about chickens until they actually have them is their emotional capabilities. They are huge. People do not give chickens the credit they deserve for their intelligence Mm -hmm. and for their emotional capabilities. They love and can be loved. Absolutely. And they're very intelligent. Even if you have a chicken who is kind of standoffish and doesn't like to be scooped up and hugged, they tend to, if you've spent time with them, they tend to want to be around you. Yeah. So even if you're just, say, sitting in your yard free-ranging them or sitting in the run with them, they're hanging out. They're interacting with you. There's been studies done where people have said, what is it about chickens that relaxes you? And Mm -hmm. it's the fact that they never stop moving. I can see that. Yeah. Like kind of like fish. Right. So you're watching something that's moving, moving, moving. So it quiets your brain. It quiets your brain. Mm -hmm. And just watching them do their thing can be so beneficial. Or just sitting there and they jump up in your lap and sit on you. Right. And it's just they're a pet. They're a companion If you're lonely, they will fill a void. They can, absolutely. You can actually take that a bit further and say, this goes back to our talks about chicken buddies. If you can find someone who does chickens the same way you do, it could be another source of companionship. Yeah. I mean, we also lock in the mental health benefits. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're an anxious person, it may help calm you. You know, you still might have to take your medicine and stuff like this, but it may help just calm. Right. Right. Since we're talking about mental health and companionship, I just want to say that there are a lot of online chicken groups. Yeah. And some of them are friendlier than others. And some are really, really harsh. Some are really harsh. I'm not going to join a group that's about meat chickens. No. Because that's not what I do. And so what I would say is if that's what you want to do, find your people. Yeah. You don't have to stay in a group if it's, it's if it's people who chicken in a different way than you do. Exactly. Find your people. You'll find some more companionship. And that's going to help it with your mental health benefits as well. Yeah. Chickens in that way can bring people together. But we've seen some people, they're new to chickens and they're just getting bullied over yeah. in these groups. You know, they see their chickens differently than other people see them. And we all have to be respectful to one another and say, Your differences, maybe I don't agree with it, but I respect you for you. 
and somebody else that may see things differently, that's okay. Absolutely. Right. You know, so if you're not in the right group, get out of it. Find another one. There are your people out there. Absolutely. That's for sure. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Physical health benefits. Yes. So the obvious ones right here are lowering blood pressure and the physical effects of stress. But there are also some benefits from getting out there and doing some work. Here's the thing. You have to take care of these animals every single day. That's right. However you feel, if you're not having a good day or if you don't feel well. Yeah. (laughs) They're counting on you. Yeah, that's right. So this makes you have to move. Right. It gives you someone to have to take care of Mm -hmm. and actually move your body. Right. It's a good thing. I don't talk about it a whole lot, but I have fibromyalgia. Yeah. And it's controlled reasonably well with some medication, but I think the single thing that keeps me... I'm never pain-free, but it's always very manageable. Right. And I think what keeps that manageable is that I'm always moving doing animal care. Yeah, I mean, sometimes for me, that's what gets me out. Out of the bed, out of the house. For me, it's the kids, the girls, and the, and the animals. Yeah. They all need me. And if I feel bad one day, it doesn't give you time to really feel bad for yourself. Not There's too not long. a lot of time in there. Right. You have these beings counting on you. So physically, you have to get up and move your body. I've seen some people say, it's the only reason I move. That you know? actually takes me back to the mental health benefits a little bit. I can have an absolutely lousy day. Yeah. You know, we're like you're upset about something and I go out to the coops and I forget about it. I'm watching the girls and you can almost hear them clucking and they're scratching. You can almost hear them saying, who cares about that stuff? I lose track of time. Oh, I yeah. just sit in there and then all of a sudden it's like two hours yep. later and I've been talking to them and watching them and laughing with them. Yes. And just- They do brighten your day. You know, there is that downfall that you have to be able to take care of animals and people that you have in your life. Yes. And you shouldn't if you can't. And you may come down the road where you have to take them to the doctor or take care of a health problem. Mm -hmm. But you can deal with those things because the benefits outweigh that. This morning, I had two big pumpkins that I hadn't done anything with. I have some still too. Well, because it's starting to get so cold and freezing at night, you know what happens to pumpkins then. Oh. So this morning I took them out to my two big layer runs yes. and I threw a pumpkin in each run. Right. And I went back out to do something later this afternoon and I witnessed the Fayumis each trying to pick up a chunk of pumpkin, the same chunk of pumpkin <laughs> and run in the same direction. Yeah. With it. it looked like two dogs like with a bone. Like war. They were going the same way though. <laughs> And I laughed and laughed and I thought, gosh, my life would be so much poorer without these birds. Kind of like when Joe walked out with the chunks of cheese. Oh, the girls went crazy for that cheese. And the first one I had, it was Cornelia. He only threw one piece in. It was in the big run. So there's one chicken and 16 chickens chasing Chasing her. her, I was like, you can't do that, man. You got to throw more out there. And we know that you're not supposed to give dairy products on a regular basis. This was a special treat. It was just a special treat. Yes. Okay, so let's move on to beauty. It makes you more beautiful when you have chickens. (laughs) If you're a chicken lady, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. And chickens themselves are beautiful. That's where I was going. (laughs) (laughs) And it turns you into a backyard photographer. Chickens are gorgeous. All the different colors and feathers. And I mean, just the fact that something like a cochin exists. So there is this picture, this meme that's been out for, it's got to be years. Okay. And it shows up on social media all the time on chicken pages. Uh And basically, it's this woman like with these high heel shoes and she's staring at them or jewelry or something. And then there's the girl who's kneeling in front of 600 chickens taking her picture. And it says, this is your wife and this is my wife. And every time Joe sees it, he's like, that is totally legit. Yeah. You put me in front of my chickens. I'm constantly taking pictures of them. I probably have more chicken pictures on my phone than anything else. I get a lot of sheep pictures too, but yeah. They're very beautiful. They are. Being able to appreciate that, it makes you happier. I think anyone who's happy is more beautiful. But you know the meme I put up the other day? Oh, yeah, the chicken lady one? Yeah, it was like, it's like this- I cracked up. Badass woman in fatigues and this short, chic haircut. And it says, what I thought my apocalypse outfit would look like. <laughs> and the next frame is this old lady wearing like 10 different Probably color- from Italy. Knits, right? She's got a hat and a shawl and a skirt. She's and, like 100. Yeah, and she's out there with her chickens with the kerchief over her head. And it said, what my apocalyptic outfit really looks like. Honestly, it's true. yeah. You know what? The people who make fun of the chicken lady are the first people that are going to be, if something's happening to the world, at your doorstep looking for eggs or looking for you to help. Oh, denied. Exactly. Denied. Exactly. No eggs for you. So finally, they bring happiness and fun to your life. Yes, they do. 
There's nothing more fun than watching your kid run through the yard with a bag of goldfish and four chickens. Chicken cheese? cheese. <laughs> Has happened at this house. I love everything about it. Like I said, if you if you have a flock imbalance and you don't want more, I get it. I love the excitement of picking out new breeds because I want all the breeds. They're like potato chips. Exactly. I love watching babies grow up. I love everything about this. I love adult chickens. I love how beautiful and funny they are. Yeah. Every single bit of this. I feel like I don't even know how I survive without chickens. Yeah. I mean, when we moved here almost 10 years ago, that's what stopped us at first. We had a very small piece of land. And you know what? Now I know things are different. I could have done it on that land too. But but that was a quarter acre. I moved to three. And then I saw the land and I said, this is such a waste not to have them. That's right. And we went there and we did it. And I can't imagine my life without them. Mm -hmm. They do bring joy. They do bring good physical, like you got to move. You got to get out there. When it's it's six degrees and you say, there are people in their house right now just drinking a cup of coffee going, man, it's cold out there. Right. They're not out there. You are. That's a good thing too. And chicken care is a bit manageable. It's not like you're hauling hay bales and five gallon buckets of water the way I have to do with the sheep. That is more physical work. If you do it smart- uh huh. You have to be a smart chicken keeper and like set do up the things that makes your life easier. That's right. Set up things so they're more efficient. Heat it bowls in the winter. Right. Make your routine efficient for you. And start with higher quality products in the beginning because they will make your life easier in the long run. You might spend a little bit more in the beginning, but take it from us. It will save you. It pays off in the long run. It really does. Healthy birds, a good healthy bird is worth their weight in gold. That's not to say that there aren't special needs chickens and rescued chickens that need help. But we just mean if you're just getting a regular laying hen, yeah, invest in better quality care because it will pay off. And invest in that chicken with yourself mentally. Look at that chicken for who they are and know their capacity to love and their emotional capabilities and appreciate those in the chickens because we say it all the time, you will get back what you put in. Nothing better than chickens dust bathing. You can't go wrong with it. One little note, if you and your family are deciding you want to get chickens, you might want to have a quick conversation and make sure you're all on the same page about what and how you're going to work with chickens. Because you've heard my story before. Yeah, just just, <laughs> just, to, just to try to smooth the waters a little bit and make sure everything's going to be okay. Yeah, definitely do that. It's always worth it. In closing, get the chickens. Instead of eating the cake, eat the cake and get the chickens. I was going to say, what are you talking about? Eat the cake and then get the chickens. Well, I'm course. saying both. Yes. Do both. We're Everybody the- always says, life's short, eat the cake. Well, life's short. Eat the cake and get the chicken. Work off some of that cake. Yeah. Because there's always more cake to be eaten. Speaking of cake or cookies, let's move on to... Cracking the eggs. Cracking those eggs. We're oh. still in Italy. We're in Italy and we're talking about the pizzelle. I love pizzelle. I grew up with a very Italian family. Nuh-uh. My grandfather was the chef because in Italy, a lot of men are the chefs. Well, it's that old thing. If a woman does the cooking, she's a housekeeper. If a man does it, he's the chef. Exactly. Yeah. Well, my grandfather was brought over as a child from Italy, and so he had it in him. So my memory of Pizzelles is going into their house and going up to him and saying, Grandpa, get the can. Because in the can, he always had- his- A stack of Pizzelles in the can. Yes. Yeah. It was in the closet, in the living room, and you would open up the door, and there was the can, and always had Pizzelles in it. And he would say, go get yourself a cookie. Oh, it's, they're so good. And you would give them the can and you would just eat all these cookies. If you've never seen Pizzell before, they're large, like three or four inches in diameter. They look like a flat ice cream cone. Right. It's, a, it's like a large flat cookie. They're made on irons. Yeah. So a Pizzell iron, it comes usually with a cone. Mm-hmm. So you can make the cones I, out of the same thing. I have that. Yeah. Yeah. So legend holds that Pizzelle were the first cookies ever made. And they're good. I found some sources saying that they were developed in central Italy as far back as the 8th century. Nice. So like the 700s. Yep. The word Pizzelle is from the same root word as pizza. It means flat or round. And then when you put the L on the end, it means small. Right. So it's a small round. They are traditionally anise flavored. Which is that licorice flavor in the seasoning that you have. Now, today, you can find them in chocolate, vanilla, and everything in between. The girls and I, we make them. So I have multiple Pizzelle irons. 
The irons are usually detailed, like they're decorative, right? There's all different ones that you can so get. So you can get these pretty patterns on them. You get them. different patterns. and Snowflakes and things. Yeah. So I actually have one of my grandfather's irons. Oh, cool. But the thing is, I actually tried to use it. Not good. The old one? Do you have to sit it on like a griddle top? No, but I just did like spray, like for oh. stickage. Yeah, no. Is it cast iron? I had to look at it again. It's up in the attic. Or but- steel maybe? You need to really grease this thing. Okay. So instantly, it's, everything's stuck. So I'm like, okay. And in with it is my grandfather's actual like written recipe for the pizza Ooh. House, which I have to get down so we can do. Yeah, this is my recipe, but I would love to work yeah. with that one too. The batter is really easy to make. It's so easy to make. And you can even put sprinkles in it and make fun fatty pizza uh-huh. which I do with the girls. I like the anise flavor, but I don't like it overpowering. So I was wondering if I could chop some of the anise hyssop leaves in my garden and put them in there. You could. Have you ever been, well, I know you've been to Brown's because it's closer to you than me. Brown's Orchard? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And now they have so many natural, legit flavorings Uh that are liquids that aren't like imitation or whatever. So pure extracts. Pure extracts. Mm -hmm. Any of those, you could flavor your pastel with. Yeah. So you can make it maple. You can make it whatever you want. Wow. So let's go through what you need. Take me through this because I know you've made them way more than I have. So you can serve pizzelles as are. You can dust them with powdered sugar. Yep. You can fill them with like curd or ice cream for like a sandwich cookie. Yes, you could. They're very light though. They're Uh very easily breakable. Okay. Well, what even for an ice cream sandwich, that would be okay. Yeah. Or you can form them into fancy ice cream cones or cannoli shells. Yes. Usually irons come with the cone. And as soon as it comes off the... It almost looks like a wooden bobbin that you can roll them in. Or steel. Oh, steel. Okay. And then you wrap it around Uh or and then it just dries like that. And you have yourself a cone. Perfect. This recipe makes about two dozen. It does. And here's the thing. You need the Pizzell iron. So, you know... Otherwise, they're not Pizzell. Yeah. We're going to have a link on our Amazon store for you. But you can go right on Amazon and there's lots of different ones. Uh Uh-huh. And... They're not that crazy expensive. They can be more expensive. But if you just want something to try, you can get an inexpensive one. They give you so many years of making delicious cookies and beautiful cookies. They're beautiful. Yeah. You know, I actually saw some photos where someone had hung them on a tree. Yeah. It looked so pretty. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. You can look at the designs and pick what you want in the designs. I love the snowflakes. I also read, when I was looking for the history of Pizzell, I read that the landed families, the wealthy families in Italy, they would commission irons that had like their family coat of arms or seal. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy fancy. But, you know, it's something that is so light that I can eat like a hundred That's the thing. Yeah. They're so, so light. I love them. But we had an assembly line at Christmas time. We usually have two or three irons going. And, you know, the girls are just popping in the batter. The thing of it is you have to know exactly how much. It's a little play. So, like, in the beginning, I always start with a little bit less of the batter. Okay. And then if it doesn't make enough, I know to add a little bit more. Okay. But if you start with too much, it's going to run over everything. Yeah. So, should we tell everybody what you're going to need? Absolutely. Okay. You're going to start with three eggs. Of course. Mm-hmm. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. One and a quarter cups of flour, and I used all-purpose Bob's Red Mill one-to-one works, and King Arthur Flour's one-to-one gluten-free worked as well. Right. Two teaspoons of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla, a quarter of a teaspoon of anise. Now, that can come out. Right. That is optional. That's optional, and you can switch it up for a different flavor, or you can just keep them vanilla. Could you back the flour down to about a cup and a half and put in about a quarter of a cup of cocoa and peppermint extract? Yes. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, there's chocolate ones out there. I've had chocolate ones from Wegmans. I've never made the chocolate myself, but I've made all different kinds. Yeah. And I play around with the flavorings. Like, I put peppermint in. Uh Uh-huh. Did I mention the melted butter? Nope. Okay, so eight tablespoons of melted butter and a pinch of salt. Medium bowl, you want your eggs, your sugar, and then the extracts. You're going to whisk that. Mm -hmm. Add the flour, salt, baking powder, and whisk that until it's smooth. Think of like pancakes or waffles. Yeah. That's kind of what it is. A lot of people try to mix in sprinkles, little mini chocolate chips, Uh different things. And I will tell you this, the sprinkles make them look like funfetti and the kids love them. I bet. So the last step is to whisk in the melted butter. Yeah. I guess you probably have to be pretty thorough on that one. Yes. And then you're going to preheat your pastel iron and you want to make sure that it's ready. 
there are lots of different makers, so you probably need to be familiar with your own instructions, know how to work your own Pazelle iron. I think the first few are all tests, and that's how I do it. Yeah. Like, when I plug it in, I make sure the light goes on, and the first few are testers. Is it like a them. pancake where the first one is never perfect? It's and, never yep, perfect. Yep. And they're always the ones you eat, and then you're like, you can't eat anymore. They're coming out well now. You can adjust, right. So then you adjust, and I think that's the best way to do it. Once you've put the batter on there, yeah. it's like, what, a minute or two? It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. It's just like a waffle, but it's actually quicker because uh-huh. they're so thin. Okay. So you want them thin, and you want them brown evenly, but not burned. Okay. Can you pop open the top? Sometimes, but it might stick on you. Okay. So that's why I'm saying the first few time. Mm-hmm. And then you'll kind of know. It's like French toast. We're down to like three minutes flip. Right. Like instead of looking constantly. Yeah, yeah. Once you play with it, then you can know what you're doing. Okay. Once you cook them, you're going to stack them and let them cool. Yep. Then you sprinkle them with the powdered sugar yep. if you're going that way. Can you drizzle them with chocolate? Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, the other thing you can do is top them with Nutella or some oh. kind of spread or well, peanut butter. There's where you get almost like a sandwich cookie yep. with them. Yeah. But they're so thin. They're I mean, a delicate cookie. Yeah. They are. But they're one that you can eat like a hundred of. I love them. I really love them. They bring a lot of childhood memories back mm-hmm. for me. My grandfather actually built the house himself. It was an amazing house. The brick house near me? Yeah. Oh, wow. He built that himself. Wow. And when you went there, there were certain things that you were never without of. Themselves were one of them. Uh-huh. We always had homemade pizzas. Oh, it's wow. It's so cliche, but it's, uh, yeah, but it's so truth. good. So there's certain things in the Bazelle, we always had them in that big can. It's like the Danish cookie can. I was going to say Pringles. Always full. So Fantastic. If you've made them before, send us some pictures of what kind of molds that you have. Can you get a Pazelle iron that has a hen on it? That would be Wouldn't that be amazing? amazing? Oh, my God. Okay. We do not have it. We need but- to find out how to, how to make this happen. <laughs> I need amazing. hen pizzelles. Oh my God, if you have it, let us know where you got it. Seriously. We're it. Okay, let's move on to retail therapy. Retail therapy. Yeah. Okay, so this week we have a special guest. We're welcoming Andrea Hunter, the owner and creator of the Chicken Love Box subscription company. Enjoy. Andrea, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you. I'm great. I'm great. And this time of year is always nice with friends and family and lots to do. And I'll be glad when it's over. <laughs> Not really. It's it's a lot of fun, but it is a lot of work, especially for mamas out there. Oh, yeah. You have some help for people who are shopping for those chicken ladies out there. And you have some special holiday goodies and different things to talk about for the new year. That's right. I um, just wanted to remind everybody that we have an online store where you can get just last minute one-time gifts. There's everything from pajamas to books about chickens, salt and pepper shaker. I mean, there's just lots of different things in there. So there's something for everyone. And of course, the t-shirts are there as well. And those cool pocketbooks that you have. Oh, the purses, the Chala handbags. I'm glad you brought that up because the Chala handbags are something that I have been going after for almost a year. And those are, they're so beautiful. And vegan leather is high quality. I mean, it has this pretty fabric liner inside the purse. It's just beautiful. I have a lot of chalice stuff myself, and I love it. My keychain that my kids make fun of all the time, my huge chicken keychain is by them. The really good thing with them is a proceed of every one of those sold goes to an animal charity. Yes, it's a great group, and I really love their products, and I'm proud to have them in the store because they're not junk. They are very nice. I have the little rooster crossbody bag. I like that one. It fits my cell phone and just a little bit of change, and that's all I need. The PJs are super cute, too. They really are. And I was going to say, if you want to gift a subscription to a chicken lady in your life, it's not too late to do that. The next box will be going out starting in January. So really, you've got another week or two before the end of December to go ahead and get that ordered. And she will be very happy with a subscription box. Oh, yes. Those boxes are amazing. We love everything that you put in them. And the care that you put into everything that goes in those boxes is top notch. Everything you put in there is top notch also. 
We go on Instagram once a month live to open the boxes so that you can see what's in it. It's a fun time. Yes, I love your box openings. I hope I can be at the next one. It's so much fun. It's true. We really never know what's going to happen on our lives, but we have been getting fantastic numbers of people to come out and watch. I mean, it's one of our favorite things to do is pop open that box. We never know what kind of amazing stuff is going to be in there. You do a great job, Andrea. Thank you so much. It's really work of love. I enjoy it. Andrea, I'm looking at your website right now. I went back to look at the Chala bags again, and you have both the bowling bag purse and you have those satchels. The satchels are amazing. It's like you could be the best dressed executive chicken lady with your rooster satchel. I love these. Yes, they're very sharp looking. And I have some of the satchels here in stock and ready to go. And the colors are beautiful too. The hardest thing is picking which color. Yeah. 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 And I have the big bowling, they call it a bowling bag. And I suppose you could put a bowling ball in it, but it's really a purse. (laughs) It's super nice too. Believe it or not, the canvas crossbody, the little canvas tall ones, they have been selling the best. Wow. So we, I've gotten orders for the olive, for the dark brown, and the regular brown. So we're going to have some well-styled chicken ladies out there. Absolutely. Let's put it this way. In my purse, there's probably more stuff and weighs more than a bowling ball would weigh anyway. So (laughs) I've packed that thing full of stuff I'm going to need. So you need a big bag. Go hold your stuff. Absolutely. We'll talk about the subscriptions in a minute. But if someone wants to buy single items, like if they want to get one of the purses or they want to get a t-shirt, they should just go straight to your website. That's right. Just go to chickenlove.com and that's L-U-V. And then just click at the very top. There's a link that says shop the store. And that will take you there. And then there are different headings. If you know you're looking for a t-shirt, you can click on tees. If you know you're looking for um, a chala handbag, you can click that and just go right to it. So it makes it convenient. And all the chicken books too, which is also an amazing thing to have on there. I'm looking at the yep. chicken books right now. You have a great selection. That's fantastic. It's yes. Awesome. And there's some good selections in there. One stop shop for the chicken lady in your life. It doesn't get easier than that. Hey, if there are any guys that listen to this and you know your wives love chicken stuff, Joe, are you listening? You go to chickenlove.com and you can't go wrong. That's right. Just send them a link and tell them to hit purchase. And I see Holly looking at the buffalo plaid Christmas chicken. Very, very pretty. I love that one. Oh my God, that one is Your prints on your shirts are fantastic. Whenever I wear my shirts out, everyone stops me. I love your shirt. Oh my God, that's so cute. You must have chickens. So if you like to wear what you love, the shirts are so soft, top quality. And Holly is ooing and eyeing over everything. We need that shirt. Look at that shirt. It's literally a Christmas tree made out of chickens. I mean, this is the cutest thing ever. That is beautiful. We shipped one of those out yesterday to a customer that bought it. That one turned out really, really cute. I love that one. That's great. You can also buy last year's t-shirt, which I'm actually wearing right now, which is the evergreen. Yep. Hand. Love that one too. Your shop the is ever- a rabbit hole. I'm no longer actively engaged in this interview. I am now shopping. Okay. The evergreen chicken, Holly Ann. That reminds me of our chicken race that we made a year yeah. or two ago. Do you remember those? Yeah. It looks just like them. When we sat down at the table and made those wreaths, it was so cool. It looks um, just like I them. I love that shirt. Yeah. And I've worn my Mary Chipmas shirt multiple times. I wore it out for Black Friday shopping. They're comfortable. You can't go wrong with them. I can't say that enough. Andrea, you give back to the community also. Tell us a little bit about the charity that you're helping this season. Last year, we decided to help the Adopt-A-Bird Network, and that was great. We were able to get a nice contribution into that. But this year, I think my heart is really with an organization called World Vision. They have been in existence for over 70 years. It's a humanitarian organization, and it's about meeting the needs of starving families and starving children. And for only $25, you can provide a family with two chickens that will feed them through the eggs. And what I'm hoping we can do, we can do 12 chickens for $150. So the more that we get in and take care of, I mean, 12 chickens can feed an entire village. 
and it has sustaining power because, you know, the chickens lay the eggs and some of them sit and then they will have more chickens. So they're easy to breed. They provide the perfect food because we know that eggs are so high in protein. It's a gift of life. And chickens are very important in that circle there. They have other farm animals that they ask for donations for goats and alpacas and some cows. So really, because we are chicken love, we want to concentrate on providing some chickens to these areas through World Vision. So I'm very excited about that. That's amazing, Andrea. We love that. So we always have Chicken Love linked in our show notes because you are one of our longtime sponsors. But I will also have a link to World Vision if people want to go take a look. And we'll have links directly to your website and catalog. Wow, that's nice. So with the World Vision contribution, what I hope to do is, you know, our two-year anniversary is coming up. And last year, we did our contribution at the end of February, which is our anniversary month, two years ago. Yikes! What I'm trying to do is we will push the World Vision, probably won't advertise it a lot until after Christmas, the week after Christmas, we'll put it up. But I would like to have the really nice gift to provide to World Vision at the end of February. And it's a gift of chickens. And maybe there are some crazy chicken ladies over there. And the pictures from World Vision, I mean, these kids with these farm animals, I'm sure that a lot of their chores have to do with caring for them because, you know, the chickens are providing eggs and that's what they need to eat. So it's important. We've talked about this in multiple episodes and the importance of eggs in the world. People don't quite get it sometimes because it's not just scrambling eggs. A lot of the things that you eat, they're made because of eggs. Eggs are in them. They help make them. So to give these people the gift of a chicken who lays eggs to eat, they can do so much with it. It's so important. We love that you give back. That's just so nice. And it makes you feel good at the holiday season when you're buying something and a portion of it is going to help somebody else. Yes, it's very important. So, Andrea, do you have anything exciting and new coming up in the new year? We do. We have a couple of new things, and we are growing, so it's just a lot of fun to come up with some new things. But starting in January, we will be doing a monthly giveaway. It won't be the same thing every time, but it only applies to subscribers. So we will have a scratch-off. I'm so excited. So you will have a card, a scratch-off card in your box, and you know, get your quarter, a penny, or whatever, and rub the scratch-off off, and it will let you know if you are a winner. I haven't decided yet, but I think we will probably have a first, second, and third winner, maybe quarterly, but at least monthly, we will have a winner. And the prizes are going to vary. It may be a chala bag. It could be a t-shirt, just whatever. So we'll have some cute things. And I think that is so fun. I love to do scratch off and see if my box was the lucky one. And honestly, I won't even know where the, which one it is because when the stickers are placed, I won't see it either. So it'll be nice and it'll be a lot of fun. I'll, I'll be like the Maryland Lottery over here. You got to play to win. So you got to get a subscription so you get that chance to win. That's right. And the fun factor is what I really love about it is, you know, just the fun of that. And we'll make a big deal of who the winner is each month. And it'll just be a lot of fun. And it's exclusively for subscribers. So, But across the board, all the different Mm -hmm. sizes of boxes. Yes. Every subscriber, whether you are the Happy Hen T-Shirt Club or if you get four copies of the Mega Box every month, everyone will have a chance to win. So we will also, this is kind of a small thing, but I think it's fun, a magnet of the month. So we have like a little two inch by three inch magnet and it's going to be different chicken breeds on there with the name of them. So I think that will be awesome and fun. And I can see my grandkids even playing with those on the refrigerator and, you know, looking at the different kinds of chickens. I don't know if you noticed, but that gift wrap that was in the September box. Love um, it. It has a lot of breeds of chickens on there. And they're so pretty. And they are correct, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Not only did we notice, I may have held the wrapping paper up and pointed out different breeds during the (laughs) box opening. It's really, really nice stuff. I love it. 
And there's so many fun breeds. I mean, it would be years before we ever ran out of breeds to put on the magnet. So yeah. anyway, it's just a fun thing to get started, a little collection. And I like to keep magnets on the side of my refrigerator. And so that's fun. We are going to have some new shirt variations, like we have a lightweight hoodie coming up that's very lightweight. In fact, that will be in the January box, I think. Okay. So we're going to have that. Of course, we will always have our signature soft raglans. I mean, they are just incredibly soft and they will never go away. There's a really cute shirt in your December box. I know you haven't opened it yet, so I won't tell. <laughs> um, that's one of the hardest things of this business is not just blabbing my mouth every month saying, look what you're going to get, look what you're going to get. But it's a surprise. You'll have to wait until you do well, your open. Well, we will open it before this airs. So we're patiently waiting right now as we record, but we will be seeing it soon. We're excited. Woohoo! That's awesome. Oh, there's one other thing for 2023 on your 12th box. The next box you will receive, number 13, will have a free logo tee just to thank you for 12 consecutive months. Oh, that's You have an extra tee. That's amazing. You're very generous, Andrea. Thank you. Well, it's just my nature. My mother said when I was a little girl and we bought school supplies, I would buy two of everything because there was a little girl in my class who couldn't afford school supplies. So it's just my nature. That's so so nice. And there needs to be more people in the world like you and a woman business owner. You own your own business. You're giving back to a cause that you love and it's chickens. So everybody needs to get on board here with chicken love because you're not going to get a better box anywhere. That's for sure. We love ours every month. And let me tell you, I wear my tees all the time and get comments on them all the time. So it's a good thing. If you love chickens, you get stuff. We always say it for you and your chickens. (laughs) Can't go wrong with it. That's right. Thank you so much for letting me come on today. It's always a pleasure to talk to you guys. And I'm so excited about all the wonderful things happening with the podcast and so many listeners now. It's just awesome. Yeah, we've been partners since the beginning, and it's been a pleasure to work with you. We've said it multiple times on our Instagram lives, but Andrea does make our mugs for us. They are on our Etsy store. They're amazing. She does an amazing job with everything. Thank you for coming on and chatting with us. We hope you have the merriest of Christmases. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Bye. We just want to thank Andrea again for taking the time to come on the show, talk with us a little bit, give you an update on some of the exciting stuff coming up in the new year. Okay, so should we tell everybody what we're going to be talking about next week? Next week, we're spotlighting a ridiculous bantam. They're (laughs) so cute. They're called the Old Lansk Dwarf. Can't wait. So cute. Our main topic, we're going to do our year in review. We're going to talk about the high points and low points and everything in between. What happened, baby? Oh, cracking the eggs. We're giving you a cocktail. We're giving you a coffee flip cocktail. Oh, my God. Can't wait. And retail therapy, it's our annual chicken booze. Yay! Celebrate the new year the right way. Coffee and booze? Does it get much better? Chickens and (laughs) pizel. So what should we tell everybody to do until next week? Hug your chickens. Every day and kiss them too. We'll talk to you next week. Happy holidays. Have a very Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. If you'd like to see more of us, please follow us on Instagram at Coffee with the Chicken Ladies. If you'd like to help us grow the podcast, please leave us a written review on Apple Podcasts. If you'd like to become a patron of the show, please visit our Patreon page, patreon.com slash coffee with the chicken ladies. Thanks for listening.